Hey y'all, this is Paul from Screenwriting Software Expert. Today I'm going to give you a beginner's guide on how to use Fade In. So by the end of the video, you will learn how to create a title page, know how to use the standard elements of screenwriting crafts such as scenes, action, dialogue, etc., and get an introduction to some of the helpful resources that Fade In has. Now typically I've been creating guides for screenwriting software that I think works well. And I think Fade In is one of those great pieces of software. If you'd like to see my full review of Fade In, you can find that in the link or in the description of this video. So for today's video, I'm going to be working with the free version of Fade In for Mac. So if you're using a PC, there might be different keyboard shortcuts. Just keep that in mind. All right, so we are pulling into Fade In right now. And as you can see, I have a bunch of different uh, screenplays that I have, I have worked on for different um, projects. Most, mostly you can see they're my Chaplin's uh, scripts for, the, for, um, for my web series I've been working on. So as you begin to look into uh, Fade In, we're going to start by selecting Screenplay. Uh, and what we're going to do first is we're going to take a look at how to uh, create that uh, title page. So in order to create your title page, just go up to document, select title page, show title page. And here you can type in anything you want for your title page. You can have um, title, uh, really cool screenplay. <laughs> and then we'll do, um, so I've just been highlighting and I could put screen writing expert. Uh, you can put copyright in here, draft information, contact information. Again, you just have to, uh, I'm just uh, selecting each of these and, and highlighting them. And then I am just changing that information. Uh, typically for contact information, you can put an email address. Uh, very rarely do I see a phone number, but mostly it's an email address right now. Uh, in the past, it's been people's addresses, physical addresses. Draft information, again, this is version one, version 10, or if you're like me, version 100. <laughs> um, and again, copyright, uh, you can put that down if you have a copyright for that. All right, so once you are done with your title page and how you like it, what you can do is you can go to click off, show title page. So the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to create and figure out how to do scene headings, actions, Karen character parentheticals. And you're going to see all the information we're going to look at is over here on this particular side. So scene heading, if you want to put your scene in. Uh, so the scene heading again is important because we always need to say where the action is going to begin. Uh, you can either type in E for exterior, or I for interior. Um, so let's do interior. And then what we need to do next is, so we just type, we just hit return and that gives us the interior. We can place, we're, how about we're just in the house, and then we need to do a uh, time of day, and we're going to say evening. And you can see it auto auto fills for you. This is one of the, the things that I like uh, about auto filling. So once it auto fills, and if you like that selection, just simply hit the return key, and that will get you that. So for action, typically this is what's happening during the scene or what we're seeing. Uh, for action scenes, you typically don't want them any longer than five lines. They need to be uh, five sentences at the most. Otherwise, you need to break it up with either a new scene, a uh, character, uh, dialogue, or something along those lines um, because this is not a novel, so you want to make sure that you are writing uh, visually. So for action, um, we can write any type of action we want. Uh, we can say, uh, and you can be, as you think about this, you don't want to be too specific, but you want to be specific enough. Uh, again, you're not writing a novel. You are writing uh, what you hope people will see on the screen. What I think I'll do for this one is I'll take a little bit out of one of my screenplays that I'm um, reading or um, working on right now. And uh, so let me see. Wayne chuckles and waves as he speeds down the road. Max shakes his head and walking back to the old uh, police cruiser. Uh, where his partner Shane is sitting. All right, so you can see that's pretty easy. Uh, next thing I wanna do is I wanna add, so I just hit return and then I wanna add a character. So let's say that Max is gonna say something to Shane. Um, so we just type in Max, we hit enter again, dialogue. 
he can say Shane I don't know why I always let him go and the nice thing about this is then the next uh, section after that again it's asking either for action or section if I'm gonna have a dialogue with somebody I simply hit character and it's say I can write in Shane and dialogue um, because you are a softy uh, so, so there you go so there's everything you need in order to do all the basic things of screenwriting uh, you see how we are able to do uh, uh, scene headings, you're able to see the action we're able to put in, we're able to put in uh, character and then dialogue. The nice thing about characters is once, so if we go for another character here again, and I type in M, you can see it automatically populates Max. And again, I just need to hit return in order to, to do that. If I want to add Shane, again, I just type in the S, again, it automatically puts that in there. Pretty neat, huh? Now, if I want to put a parenthetical in there, which you do very sparingly, you don't want to put a lot of par parentheticals. You want to have the actors act. So you just simply hit return and then you can select parenthetical and I could say softly or whispers or you only want to use a parenthetical if what the character is saying isn't always easy to read. So maybe um, Shane is crying. Um, you know, it doesn't it doesn't make sense from this from this indication of what's going on. Uh, but but you put that parenthetical in there if the actors need to know something that doesn't look typical that they can't get right out of the script. Now, let's say that they both were talking at the same time. The other last element that we're going to touch on real quickly is um, uh, dual dialogue. You would simply go to format and then make dual dialogue after we've highlighted uh, the text. And there you go. Everything is dual dialogued. Um, if you want to take it out of dual dialogue, you just highlight it again. And there you go. You've been able to take it out of uh, dual dialogue. Now, this is one of the nice things about uh, fade in is that it's you have all these wonderful directions, you can either do keyboard shortcuts, or you can do uh, stuff off the side here. Um, and so once you get used to the keyboard shortcuts, it's pretty uh, it's pretty immersive and so let me show you what the immersive mode looks like so you simply go to view uh, click full screen minimal and there you go this is all you need to do so if you're curious how you do each portion again so again if we're gonna say where they're gonna be in a forest exterior so what we can do is just simply hit um, so what we do is we just right click with our mouse we add element do scene heading and we can start exterior uh, we're going to say they're in the forest this time. Morning. And see, there we go. We're right into the action. Uh, Shane and Max go running. So if we want to um, change the element again, we just hit return and we can go down to the element. We can add character in. So Max, um, he's talking to Shane. How are you doing today? Again, um, it's pretty easy uh, to go to the next element. You can start, just hit tab, and that automatically gets you into the character again. So I can select Shane. I am doing fine. Uh, and then you're back into the action again. Um, or if you need to switch the scenes again to something different, simply right click, go down to element, and select whatever element that you need. And so this is pretty nice because it allows you just to stay uh, with an uncluttered screen, it allows you to just keep writing and focusing on your story. In order to get out of full screen mode, you just simply drag your mouse up to the top, go back to view, and unselect, unselect full screen minimal. So I'm just going to give you some basics of just the different resources you have. So I've pulled up one of my previous scripts uh, that I've used. It's the Chaplin script uh, 1.1. Uh, you can sort of see in this particular window over here, there's a couple of different things that helps you. Uh, you can look at characters. You can see all the characters that are in your script. This is also a great time to make sure that you spelled everybody's name the same. Uh, there's been a couple of scripts I've had where um, I've had uh, I've had like Warren, I only have with one R instead of two R's. And so this will help you see if there's times in your script where you need to fix some names. It also tells you all the locations that you have. Uh, the one thing, as you know, as I like to do is to have cards. And so if you want to have cards on your things, you simply go to document, click on index cards, and then you have all the uh, scenes that you have. And then you can also type stuff in here, uh, hospital call that night, you know, if there's something you want to add um, 
or if you want to look at that particular page, um, you can do that as well too. If you want to throw this up here, you can move things around uh, and that type of thing. So this is one of the useful sections of cards. Now let's say uh, one of the resources I want to put out for this, again, this is just basic resources, uh, but I think it's really important, uh, and we'll have a different video later on that talks about more of the advanced things like revisions and other type of things like that. Uh, the other thing that I think is most helpful to do is take a look at all the help. They have help in fade in, uh, they have shortcut keys you can look at, uh, fade in website support page, knowledge base. Um, and so let's take a look at each of these individually because I think they do a good job of answering different questions that you may have. Um, and so uh, they, uh, so this uh, brings in, uh, it brings you right to the fade in page and you'd probably want to look at the support page and they have frequently asked questions and they do a pretty good job of um, how to, some of the basic questions, will it work on my computer? Is the demo fully functional? Why is the software still asking me to register? So these are some of the basic questions that you get um, uh, when you look at the uh, page. So one of the next things I wanna do is throw in the knowledge base. Again, this is another place where you can find some, some questions. Um, uh, and you can definitely see, you know, there's popular searches, Mac, mobile, PDF, installing, buying, dictionaries. Uh, what's the difference between the full version? You can see some of the uh, basic questions that they have. Where are the auto file saves located, printing page range? So this again is a list of frequently asked questions. You can just type into the search bar here if you're looking for something in particular. The other thing that's really powerful is this particular search. Like I said, when I was looking at parentheticals, how to do parentheticals, um, they have a lot of, um, you know, you can look at the menu items and, and you also have uh, select top or other help topics as well too. But look at this, you know, parentheticals, it automatically pulls this up for you. Or let's say we look at dual dialogue. Let's take a look because I didn't know how to do that the first time I did this. So dual dialogue, make dual dialogue. And look at this, it automatically points you there. So it's a very helpful support feature. So if you're having problems with uh, anything that's going on in uh, fade in, what you can basically do is go, those are the different help functions and that should help you answer the questions you have at that particular point in time. Thank you for looking through my beginning guide to fade in. I hope you found that video helpful. Let me know if you have any specific questions other than the basics that I covered uh, today. In the future, I'm hoping to do a more uh, intermediate video uh, that's gonna describe some of the other features that Fade In have, but this will get you going right now. And again, you can use the free version of the program and get a lot of done, a lot done. It's a great program to use. It's really good about immersing you in your writing and allowing you to just do things and it, you don't have to think about a lot of things. It just, um, like if you wanna do parentheticals, dual dialogue, it's really pretty intuitive and pretty easy to do. Hi, if you're new to the channel, my name is Paul from Screenwriting Software Expert. I make videos about screenwriting software and I do my best to answer questions about the software and to help you write well. If this is the content that you find helpful, feel free to hit the subscribe button below. If you have questions about software, leave them in the comment section below and I will do my best to answer them for you. Or if there's a software you want me to look at, feel free to leave me uh, another comment below as well too. And I will be reviewing some more softwares. I'm hopefully gonna be doing a software a week uh, about what I like about a software or doing a more depth, uh, deep dive into that software as well too. Well, until the next video, write well and live well.